Live from WSLS, this is 10 News at 6, working for you. The Storm Prediction Center has some of us highlighted in a risk for some strong to severe thunderstorms this evening. We'll time out the storms for you and let you know where the worst of the weather will be coming up. Fighting for funds to address staffing shortages. These troopers are like everyone else. They're looking to support their families. How Virginia State Police plan to use the millions they're asking for. Hear what authorities are warning parents to be on the lookout for in their children's rooms. That's coming up. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm John Carlin. And I'm Lindsay Ward. Let's start right off with your weather. It is hot out there, certainly. Chief Meteorologist Jeff Hanowitz is here. So, Jeff, Jeff, just how hot did it get today? Well, we tied the hottest day of the year in Roanoke, getting to 95. We had temperatures anywhere between roughly 86 and 96 degrees across the region today. Now we're turning our attention farther upstream. That's where we have a cold front bringing showers and thunderstorms, really extending from New England all the way west into the Ohio River Valley. The cluster of showers and thunderstorms we are most concerned with, extending from Pittsburgh all the way to the the west towards Cincinnati and this is all moving to the south and to the east and as it does it is going to be a player in our weather here a little later this evening. Storm Prediction Center has us either in a level one or two risk out of five. That's called a marginal or slight risk for severe weather. Timing of this is after about eight o'clock lasting through perhaps one, two a.m. Storm threats include localized wind damage and localized flooding. Now your Friday planner showing tomorrow being a quieter day for us. Temperatures at 8 a.m. though starting out in the upper 70s. Highs tomorrow in the lower 90s. Hazy hot for us no doubt tomorrow with a few thunder showers possible not only early in the day but then again and late in the day, looking to the weekend, temperatures Saturday 87 down to 85 on Sunday. So we're cooler this weekend, less humid this weekend, with a chance for a few thunder showers by late Sunday once again. John, Lindsay. All right, thank you, Jeff. And to stay up to date, no matter what the weather, by, download the, by downloading the WSLS 10 news and weather apps, you can get alerts sent straight to your phone. Virginia State Police want millions in COVID funding to help get out some uh, staffing shortage woes. Right now, more than $4 billion are up for grabs in the Commonwealth. And 10 News reporter Alexis Davila is working for you to find out if putting in more money is really the answer. In the past five years, the state police lost more than 400 staffers. And the main reason we're told is that they're not getting paid enough. This is why the Virginia State Police Association wants $18.6 million to raise salaries for officers. We're just not competitive with these. Even after the uh, raise we got in June, we're still not competitive. And these troopers are like everyone else. They're looking to support their families. A nearly $19 million request aims to get more body cameras for officers. There's also a desire to gain $20 million to replace two helicopters, which would play a role in rural communities. We have to have dependable aircraft for that particular geography, be able to get places in a hurry. And again, it's a function of saving lives. The president of the NAACP here in Franklin County tells me he finds the state police request to be a little too high. He says he would rather see that money go to localities or even help out schools in the rural communities. You don't want to overfund them, but you don't also don't want to underfund them. There are more than 300 trooper vacancies and applications are down by 40%. Lawrence says competitive salaries are needed but choosing wisely is still important. You need the best and the brightest. So you have to raise the standards, okay? And in raising the standards, then that's consummate with raising the pay rate. But you just can't choose and pick in and everybody. The General Assembly will make a decision on the requests by Monday. In Rocky Mount, Alexis Davila, 10 News, working for you. Music and event venues across the Commonwealth finally making a comeback thanks to tens of millions of dollars in federal funding. 10 News reporter Lindsay Kennett is live in Roanoke tonight outside one of those venues. So, Lindsay, how will this money make a difference? John, I spoke with the founder of Five Points Music Sanctuary here. He says that this money will allow them to make improvements that will last for years to come. So the sanctuary received nearly $170,000 through the Shuttered Venue Operators Grant Program, which will allow them to make venue and PA system upgrades, plus invest in staff. Other local venues across the region received funding, too. Across the Way Productions, which, which puts on Floyd Fest, and the City of Salem were both awarded nearly $1.3 million 
each. Grand and Theater, almost 500,000, and there are so many more. Senator Mark Warner says these venues have a ripple effect on the community. Performance venues support local jobs, but people also eat at restaurants after shows or visit from out of town, which is why he says this funding is critical. They are really important to kind of getting ourselves back to normal and in, in so many areas that kind of are the heart of the community. Here at the sanctuary, the shows support free music therapy programs and their efforts to advocate for hearing loss and accessibility. There have been some concerts here in June and earlier this month, and more are, set, are scheduled for September. Reporting live in Roanoke, I'm Lindsay Kennett, 10 News, working for you. Students from underserved communities could get a boost in tuition help from the American Rescue Plan. Today, Governor Ralph Northam announced more than $100 million in funding to help make college more affordable. He says a key to economic recovery is making sure every Virginian has access to higher education. But for many people, this is an opportunity to reconsider what they want to do with their lives. This funding can help them go back to school, get the education they need to make a career change or advance their education in their chosen field. Some of the money will also help fund online programs. All right, just a little bit of a spoiler alert for you here, but I'm gonna tell you that we are following some major Olympics news tonight. It was the much anticipated all around competition for women's gymnastics. As we've reported, of course, the reigning favorite, Simone Biles, withdrew from that competition to focus on her mental health. Now, as reporter Liz McLaughlin shows us, that allowed for more stars to emerge. When Simone Biles stepped back, Suni Lee stepped up. The 18 year old gymnast nailed her routines in the women's all around competition Wednesday, landing at the top of the podium. This medal definitely means a lot to me because there was a point in time where I wanted to quit and I just didn't think I would ever get here. Disbelief from another U.S. gold medal winner, Caleb Dressel. <laughs> sharing this emotional moment with his family after winning the 100 meter freestyle and setting a new Olympic record. That's the in the long haul 800 meter free, underdog Bobby Fink hit the gas on the last lap to surge from behind and win. And the American is passing by everybody. In the women's 4x200 meter free relay, Katie Ledecky made up for lost time in the final leg, the team landing a silver for the U.S. They were putting me in an amazing position going into the anchor. Another silver by American shooter Kaylee Browning, hitting 19 straight in trap shooting. Kaylee Browning climbing on the podium. On the eve of track and field kicking off at the Olympics, two pole vaulters, including U.S. world champion Sam Kendricks, dropped out of competition after testing positive for COVID-19. Growing coronavirus concerns in the Olympic Village as competition continues. Liz McLaughlin, NBC News, Tokyo. And when SUNY took home that goal, this was her family's reaction. I think we can call this pure joy. It's very difficult that we weren't there to support her physically, but having been able to support her with this crowd of family and community and friends and her fans, it is, it's worth it. Can you imagine? Wow. Yeah, just unbelievable. And coming up later, our sports team will be showing us uh, what that win means for the U.S. medal count. So fun to watch. Yeah. And in your town staple that survived thanks to your help, a look inside the family-owned restaurant and bed and breakfast. WSLS 10 News, the proud winner of two 2021 Emmy Awards for Best Daytime Newscast and Best Evening Newscast. WSLS 10 in your town, sponsored by Bank of Botetourt. We are in your town this week at Appomattox. And a family-owned staple is not only a restaurant, but a bed and breakfast. Babcock House includes six guest rooms, a second-floor balcony, and a backyard for recreation and relaxation. Oh, that sounds so nice. Yeah. The restaurant is open to the public Wednesday through Sunday. The local well-known Babcock family lived there until 1996. We are in a house that was built in 1884. We have a lot of history um, in, in the bones of the home as well as furnishings. And it's, you know, cozy. All looks cozy. And coming up at 7, we will show you how the community helped keep the business going during the pandemic. And then tomorrow, I want to let you know, I'll be out there with some of what the region has to offer. 
right. And this may look like your teenager's bedroom, but tonight we will show you the things you cannot see, the signs of trouble hidden in plain view. And it was a hot day. It was a hazy day, but for the most part, it has been a dry day. We'll let you know when you will need your umbrella if you're watching us across the Roanoke Valley coming up in your local weather authority forecast. A warning for parents tonight from investigators. What might look like a normal room can actually be full of dangerous items hidden in plain sight. New tonight at 6, 10 News reporter Sydney Jackstimer shows you what to look for. From hiding marijuana in a Pringles can to disguising a beer bong as a lamp, Rockbridge County Sheriff's Deputy Christopher Norris showed things that look like everyday items, which may be putting your child at risk. And that's what we're trying to do today is to let parents come in and look at some of these things that we've actually taken on cases that this could be an indicator of your, your child is at risk. The training called Hidden in Plain Sight was part of the Rockbridge Area Prevention Coalition's Forum Thursday, a day to educate local parents and teachers. So we are giving them tools, tips, education on local um, trends, um, and just ways that they can communicate with the teens in their lives on how to uh, prevent and end use substance use. At first glance, this teenager's room, which was used for a demo, may look normal. But take a closer look, and there are several red flags. Anything that you're not familiar with, it could be an indicator. Even something that may look like a watch is actually a vape. There are so many different types of vaping devices, vaping liquids that kids use drug devices. Experts say the best way to protect your child is to be proactive and maybe even a little bit nosy. Don't try to be your, your child's friend. They don't need a friend, they need a parent to help get them through these dangerous situations. Reporting in Rockbridge County, Sydney Jacksheimer, 10 News, working for you. Deputies say especially to look out for cough syrup and Sprite. Some teenagers use them to get high. You can also check inside stuffed animals. Deputies say it's an easy place to hide a pipe. Your local weather authority, always watching and tracking for you from the JES Weather Center. All is quiet for now here on the radar across southwest, central, and south side Virginia. We had a really nasty storm near Fredericksburg. Actually, it was a tornado warning in Fredericksburg not too long ago, but now just a severe thunderstorm warning for areas just north of Richmond. But what we're watching is what's further upstream to the north and to the west. If you watch areas, say, towards Pennsylvania, all the way south and west towards southern Ohio, this is the cluster of showers and thunderstorms that will soon be entering West Virginia and eventually will be impacting the Commonwealth here a little little later this evening. I'm thinking after about 8:30 or 9 o'clock is when we're going to start to see a few thunder showers moving in and that was uh, spotty thunder showers will likely be with us through about 1 2 a.m. This computer model, the RPM is really just not buying a whole lot of activity for us later this evening. And to me, I think it's underdoing the coverage area and intensity of the rain later this evening into the early part of the overnight. That being said, I don't think that we're going to have widespread severe weather. I think the highest likelihood to have some strong to severe thunderstorms will be in areas along and north of Highway 460. We're still going to have perhaps a few leftover showers by tomorrow morning, say 7:30, 8, 8:30 in the morning, but by around 10 we're dry. However, after about 1, 2 o'clock, we're going to see a few more showers and thunderstorms developing in areas south of 460. That activity will wind down as we head into, say, 7, 8 o'clock Friday evening. And then Saturday looks to be, for us, a dry day, although we're going to have some clouds around throughout the course of the afternoon. Right now, it is 94 in Roanoke, 91 Lynchburg, 92 in Danville, low to mid 80s out across the New River Valley, upper 80s and lower 90s in Rockbridge County, low to mid 90s in Covington and also into Clifton Forge. It's hot outside still. Dew points are high, but they're not as high as they could be. It's a little bit on the humid side with those dew points in the middle 60s. However, when you factor in the temperature at 94 and the dew point in the middle 60s, it feels more like 96 degrees across Roanoke Valley. Please make sure to stay hydrated if you're spending any time outside for the next couple of hours. Some good news. Notice that the muggies are going to be around full force tomorrow morning, but those dew points drop 10 degrees by tomorrow evening. So throughout the course of Friday, the humidity is indeed going to drop for us. So on Friday, late in the day, we're actually going to turn tolerable. We're going to be comfortable on Saturday, but look what happens by Sunday. Dew points go right back up again. Your forecast for tonight, we're warm with some 
passing thunder showers north of Highway 460 later this evening. Overnight lows tonight incredibly warm. It bears repetition. Lows tonight 68 to 75. Three days zone by zone forecast showing the New River Valley next couple of days you're in the 80s and you fall into the upper 70s by Sunday. Highs in the highlands for the most part in the 80s for the next three days. You're in the low to mid 90s south side tomorrow then you drop into the middle 80s Saturday and Sunday. Lynchburg, you're looking dry Saturday. Pop up thunder showers Sunday and Monday. Scattered thunder showers are turned Tuesday and Wednesday. And for the Roanoke Valley, we're looking at temperatures dropping from 91 Friday into the low to mid 80s for much of next week. Happy. All right, Jeff, the curtain went up on high school football practice around the state today, and we'll turn our attention in Richmond to that ferocious Washington defense. Sports is next. Meantime, so it begins. Again, high school football camps open today around the Commonwealth. Camp tour stop one is Glenver. Coach Kevin Clifford's Highlanders, always a force in the Class 2A ranks. Annual district and region contenders. Highlanders coming off a of spring where they reached the region final, falling to the eventual state champ Appomattox. Glenver returns a solid group of skill position players, led by a three-year starter at quarterback Aiden Walk. They'll be reloading up front, but Coach Clifford says the biggest hurdle will be accounting for the lack of numbers numbers this fall. So you got to be able to adjust your schematics to fit your kids without changing your philosophy. And that's not always easy. And um, I think we've done that here. We've evolved and we, we utilize the talent of our kids. And I think we're going to do that again this year. Yeah, I feel like we got a lot of hard workers where people trying to fill up the seniors from last year. I feel like everybody's been getting in their spots and doing pretty well right now. Actually, it's getting the hard work done. Highlanders open the 2021 fall season hosting Galax August 27th Olympic medal count. Gymnastics all around. Ring up that gold. SUNY Lee, right? And I'll be hosting the Olympic Zone coming up at 730. Oh, by the way, NBA draft is tonight. We'll get you that at 11 as well. Or A lot midnight. going on. There you go. <laughs> Busy day in sports. Nightly news coming up next. We'll see you back here at 7.